Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my a top 30 favorite Digimon. This is a list you probably didn't expect, but as you may have noticed, I have been watching through the Digimon Adventure 2020 series. I've been playing the game on my Switch. I've just been getting really into Digimon again, and so I wanted to make a list of my 30 favorites. And why 30? Well, honestly, because I didn't want to cut any of these out. There's over a thousand different Digimon, including color variants. Like, there's Gatomon and Black Gatomon. Um, so, including color variants, there's over, like, a, hundred, a thousand different Digimon. Probably close to somewhere around 800, 900 without color variants. There's still a shit ton of Digimon. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot to ca account for here. And I cut these down from a lot, <laughs> if I'm being completely honest. Uh, if I bring up my thing here, let me see if I can find it. Give me a second. Um, like, there's approximately 1,047. Um, approximately. I, I might be off by a few, but... When I first cut it down, looking at all 1,047 of them, I cut it down to 122, and then I had to cut it down again to one or to just 30. So it's like, it took a while to get this uh, figured out properly, but eventually I did. Um, this is not going to be redirected, as you can tell by the screen. I'm over here on the side. Um, that is because we're going to kind of be talking about these. We're going to go through them quick, though. Um, just because I didn't want to look up clips for all of these, plus not all of them might be in the um, in the anime, and so it's like I'd have to try and maybe find game clips and everything, and it'd just be a lot more difficult. So I just got pictures, and we're going to go from that. I'm going to talk about them just briefly, but just as a heads up, most of these are going to be due to aesthetic, because most of the... Digimon on this list I may not have even seen before. In fact, I'd say there's a good portion of Digimon in general that I haven't seen before after having looked at all a thousand plus of them. So yeah, these are mostly going to be based on aesthetic and stuff like that, um, but there will be plenty on this list that are based on just how much I liked them from the anime growing up, how much I have liked them from the games, uh, including the current one I've been playing through, Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth, all that kind of stuff. But there will be, honestly, I'd say most of the ones on here will possibly be just based on uh, aesthetic. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> um, but we're just going to get this started. Um, and like I said, we're going to try to get through these as quick as possible because there are 30 of them. Um, so, we start off with Kuzuhaman Maid Mode. And sorry some of these pictures are small. I couldn't find great pictures for all of them. So, yeah, Kuzuhaman Maid Mode. Um, I can try to zoom this in a little bit at least. Oh, geez, too much. Um, there we go. It'll probably reset for the next one. Um, but as you can see, her design is very much based off of like the entire line like with Renamon and all it's I think it's one of the evolution digivolution paths for the Renamon line um but yeah you can see she has the kind of like run the purple like Renamon mask instead of the yellow one uh her outfit is very much a shrine maiden outfit hence the maid mode um which I believe in the Japanese version is just called Miko mode um because there's a regular Kuzu Haman as well um, I like this one personally but more just because of the aesthetic rather than the regular Kuzu Haman. I, I like the maid mode aesthetic. <laughs> After that, we have Sakuyaman maid mode. Uh, as you can see, they're kind of the same. Um, Sakuyaman is, I guess, the normal route for the Renamon line. I, I think, I don't know for sure, but as, as you can see, the colors are slightly different, and that's what this one is based solely on. These are back-to-back -back just because they're practically the same Digimon, um, but it's solely because of Sakuyamon's color scheme that I don't really like that anymore. That it's one 
uh, rank higher. After that, we have Lady Devimon. And just being completely honest, growing up, there's a lot of Digimon that were like, oh yeah, these characters are hot. <laughs> um, and there was a lot of characters in anime and stuff in general where it's like, even growing up as a, as a kid, it's like, I recognize that. And Lady Devimon was definitely one of them. Even if she is a bad guy and everything, it's just like, her design is just, it's attractive. Um, plus, I just really like the lack of symmetry with her design. It, it kind of really sells her as being almost chaotic and unpredictable. Because you see, like, the, the one breast has a skull mark on it, and the other side has, like, this ripped-up outfit with the shoulder showing and all. Uh, she has the stitches, the chains that are uh, asymmetrical. Even, like, the eyes. You can see under one of the eyes there's a tear in the mask, but the other side doesn't have that. It's, it's just really cool. I just really like that. Then we have Sarismon Medium. This is one I had never heard of until I was looking up, like, all the Digimon. I actually found a video on YouTube that showed every single Digimon in existence, and it was time-stamped as for last year, so keep that. I don't think there's been much of any new Digimon since then, um, and it was late last year. Um, Sarismon Medium um, is one of those that is based solely on design and all, um, and, and putting it really simply, she's just really fucking hot. <laughs> Um, and not just because of the obvious reasons. Um, I just really love the color scheme, the design, the floral, like, uh, aesthetic going on there. Um, honestly, if it weren't for, like, the gold armor on the, on the mask and the arms and stuff, she would almost remind me of Poison Ivy from, uh, from DC Comics. Like, the design, it, it looks very much like a Poison Ivy-style costume. So it's like, yeah, it, it's... She's very attractive, and, and that's part of the reason why I do like her. Um, well, the main reason, because, again, I don't really know her outside of that. I, I don't remember seeing her in the anime at all, and I don't think I've seen her in any of the games. Uh, after Sarismon Medium, we have number 26, which is Gomamon. Um, and what can I say about Gomamon? He, look at this little cutie. Like, I've always liked Gomamon, much more so than his Digivolutions, to be completely honest. His Digivolutions never did it for me as much. Um, but Gomamon's always been super cute. He kind of has, like, this little seal aesthetic going on. Um, and just the color scheme, the purples and whites with the, uh, bright orange, uh, mohawk, it's just, like, it, it just works for him. Plus, I love the, I've always loved that little, like, kitty face thing that, uh, that plenty of Digimon and just a lot of cute characters you see in anime and stuff have. It's just, I've always liked that. Uh, after that, we have Devimon. So, the, uh, main Devimon, original Devimon, not Lady Devimon this time. Um, Devimon, this one is definitely because of the anime. Um, Devimon is the first main villain of the original Digimon Adventure anime and seems to be the same for uh, the 2020 reboot. Um, Devimon is just badass and scary. Like, he always has been. And admittedly, I, I will fully own up to this, growing up as a Christian, the concept of the devil as the bad guy has always admittedly been a thing for me, like, for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, so seeing that Digimon, like, kind of went with that and had Holy Digimon uh, with, like, the angels and then uh, Devimon is a big bad guy, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I see what they're doing here. And it's, he's just always had that presence to me. Um, and not that, like, other adventure uh, villains like Piedmon or Myotismon are bad by any means. They definitely are fantastic as well, especially Myotismon is voiced by Richard Epcar, the voice of, the English voice of uh, old man Joseph Joestar, which is amazing. But, I mean, granted, Digimon came well before that, but still. Um, he just, Devimon has always had that presence that the others haven't had for me. At least not to the same level. Um, 
So number 24 is Ancient Mermaid Mon. And again, one I had never heard of before. Um, I don't even think I've seen her design like anywhere just randomly online or anything before. I've always loved the mermaid aesthetic and this is fantastic. Like this is kind of like, it's almost Aquaman like, you know? Like you could imagine seeing this in like Aquaman comics and shit. Um, and it, yes, of course, she's hot. But seriously, like, look at the scale designs on the armor, uh, the fins and shit. Uh, you, you can see her trident here and everything. It's like, it's just a really cool design. The colors especially, like, look at the colors on the scale, on the scales. Those purples that fade into the uh, golds with a little bit of, like, greenish blue there. It's like, that's really cool. I, re I really like how they design that, how they color that. Uh, the light blues and the purples really help bring it out with the silver. Um, it just really sells the mermaid aesthetic of it. Um, I don't really understand why this, like, sells as an ancient mermaid mon, though. Um, but it's definitely a little more badass and cool looking than regular mermaid mon. Personally, for me, at least. Um, so that's why I chose specifically ancient mermaid. Uh, number 23 is Fun Bee Mon. This one actually recently came onto my list um, for favorite Digimon because of the new anime, the 2020 anime. Uh, you may remember a recent episode we reacted to had Fun Bee Mon, and I mentioned in that reaction, it's like, stop making bugs so cute. And it's like, it's super fucking cute. I hate bees in real life. Like, I, I'm afraid of bugs, and bees are definitely one of the worst for me. It's like, I, and, and I understand their point and their use, but I'm terrified of them, and it's not really something I can help. It's just like, I'm just scared of them. <laughs> but it's like, Fun Beemon, for some reason, they just made Fun Beemon super freaking cute. And it's, I, I think it's the eyes more than anything. Like, look at those eyes. You can't, you can't just be mad at those eyes. Um, so yeah, it's, Weird, but interesting. And Fun Beemon, it's just, like, really cute, really wholesome, nice Digimon. So, yeah, and the design is just really well done. It, I mean, it's very much a bee, but it also has a very Digimon feel to it, to where it feels like some kind of mythical creature or something as well. So it, it's really, really interesting like that. Uh, but Digimon does that kind of thing a lot. Um, number 22, though, is... Bon or yeah, Bancho Lilymon. Uh, so this is a variation on Lilymon, which is an evolution, a digivolution of the Palmon uh, line. We saw this, uh, the regular Lilymon in Digimon Adventure 2020 reactions as well. I don't know where this form comes from. I've, ne I I've never heard of it before I did my research for this. Um, but I adore the design. I love the colors. I, I love the outfit. Uh, it kind of has, like, this leather aesthetic. It kind of makes me think of, like, that kind of anime trope. Like, you know where there's, like, those school anime where there's always that one punk girl um, who's, like, just this badass, like, kinda almost gang leader-like uh, girl in the school who's, like, always just, like, so ag needlessly aggressive. And it's like, it just makes me think of that. And I wonder if that was inspiration for this design at all. Um, because there's, there, you can clearly see where the schoolgirl kind of idea comes from with the top and everything. And, and as you can see, the, um, the lower outfit here has the like kind of leather with almost like a zipper design there. In fact, I think that is just straight up a zipper. Um, and the leather belt and everything. It, it definitely makes me think of that. Even the like oversized red jacket. It's like, Come on, that had to be intentional. Um, it's I just really love the design, and it's a really interesting choice to go with considering Lilymon's plant aesthetic. Um, but I also see it as kind of like this opposite view of regular Lilymon, who is kind of like very girly and kindly and cutesy and everything. So it's like it, 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 I get where they're going uh, for with it. Uh, number 21, though, is Flame Wizardmon. So this is a variation on Wizardmon, who uh, was in um, the first 
Digimon Adventure series. Um, I've never I've never heard of this variation before, but I really love the design. The the red colors, the way the hat turns into a flame on top, um, the blue flames in his hand, the the two different staffs, both of which look like different colored matches. Um and and I know the entire kind of like badass flame aesthetic thing is kind of made fun of because it's so like overused and stuff. Um, but I think it works here. Um, and I think it works because of the specific uh, layout of the colors, how the reds and oranges and yellows are specifically laid out on the outfit, uh, as well as the addition of some blues here and there that kind of balances it in a different way than a lot of these typical flame aesthetics. A lot of them will use more blacks uh, for the for to accent it. And there's some blacks and some grays on here. But the blues definitely give it a different feel. And it really just, it's cool. Like this one is just cool. Some of these have been like really hot and everything and really cute, but this one's just cool. Um, but moving on, number 20 is Lalamon. Speaking of really cute ones, um, Lalamon is one of those that I feel a lot of people probably think is creepy, kind of like Coco from Animal Crossing. But to me, Lalamon is just super freaking cute. Kind of like Coco from Animal Crossing. Um, I, I'm, I've never found like that kind of like expressionless face to be scary. The kind of like, like just empty circles for the eyes and the mouth. I've never found that scary. I've always found that really cute. Um, and the plant bud like design for this. Um, it's just, it's adorable. Like, look at that. Like, look at that. You, I, I want a plush of Lalamon. Um, and number 19, I believe, is one of Lalamon's evolutions, uh, Lilamon. So Lilamon is another one that just, it is just really pretty. Just like the pinks and the yellows and whites on here, the, the lighter green for the torso with the darker green accents and the hair and everything. It's like, it's just really pretty, legitimately pretty. Like, I would love to see cosplays of this one. I love how the arms are like flowers. The arms and legs are like flowers. They're not actual, like, limbs in the way we often think of them. Um, and I don't know if the flower on her back is supposed to be, like, wings or just, like, some kind of, like, accent to it. I don't know. Um, but her design is just really pretty. Um, number 18 is Kyubimon. Um, Cubimon is the Digivolution of Renamon. And I've always loved the entire nine-tailed fox design and a lot of things. Like, as much as I nag on Naruto for being, like, too much and for trying to do too much and everything, like, the nine-tailed fox concept they used with it uh, was great, and they actually utilized it pretty well. Um, and, and you see, obviously, nine tails in Pokemon, and yeah, even uh, Digimon has their own version of that. Um, except they definitely go with more of the mythical creature feel than Ninetales in Pokemon does. Um, like, look at Kyubimon's design. I mean, outside of just the golden furred fox with the giant, like, tuft of neck fur, white neck fur, but you also have, like, the whitish blue flames on the tail and feet. You have the giant uh, rope, like around the neck fur with uh, the, like, golden uh, end pieces to it. And it's just like, you have the yin, the yin yang uh, symbols on the forehead and the, and the flank. And it's just like, it's just a really mythical design. It's like, you feel like you're looking at something out of legend. And that's really cool to me. And I mean, I love the entire Renum Online, but it's like, this really so sold it for me more than, uh, the others. Not to say it's my favorite member of the line, necessarily, but it really sold it as being something, the entire line, Digivolution line, as something like mythical, and I really love that. Number 17, though, is Lilymon. Okay, so we've had Bancho Lilymon, and now we get to the classic. Uh, Lilymon, it's another one that's just very pretty, and of course, Lilymon, I actually know more from the anime and stuff. Um, She's just always been really pretty and 
uh, like super femme and super girly, super uh, kind and generous and loving and basically a representation of Mimi's uh, positive aspects and everything. Uh, the things that I especially love about Mimi, basically. Um, and yeah, it's just, she's, look at her, like she's so pretty. I love the like leaf uh, wings and everything she has. I love the floral head crown the dress, the, uh, everything about the armbands. It's just really a pretty design. And, and some people also, this is another one where some people might find like the eyes a little creepy, those big, almost like bug-like eyes. I've always found those really pretty too. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know what people are talking about with that one. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's another one that I just really like because it's really pretty. And it's like, even growing up, it's like, that was basically my main reason liking the entire Palmon line. Like, yeah, believe it or not, I also think Togemon is pretty, even though she's just a big buff boxing cactus. It's like, big buff boxing cacti can still be pretty. <laughs> I've just always thought the line was like a really pretty uh, Digivolution line, and it's one of the main reasons I liked it so much and liked Mimi and Palmon so much growing up. Uh, but now we move on to number 16, which is Phoenixmon X. Um, so there are apparently there's these Digimon that have these like X forms. I don't know what that's about. Um, but Phoenixmon X is basically an improvement on regular Phoenixmon in every way. The Phoenix has always been my favorite mythological creature. I, I love the concept of rebirth. I love the concept of like this like really badass but also beautiful flaming bird. Um, and, and I mean, I... I there's obviously Ho-Oh from Pokemon is a great representation of that. Then you have like uh, Fox the Phoenix and Harry Potter and stuff. I've just always loved Phoenixes. So I always liked Phoenixmon, but then I found out through this research about Phoenixmon X and it's like, holy crap, that's beautiful. Like the bright yellows and whites, the red on the crown, the like kind of like, I don't know what to, you would call those, those strings coming off of it, the blues around its uh, lower half. It's just so pretty. It, it's glowing with absolute beauty. And it's just like, I, I just love it. Like, this is what a phoenix is to me. This is what a phoenix should look like. And it's just so gorgeous. Uh, number 15 is Antilamon Good. So Antilamon has a good and an evil form, and I prefer aesthetically the good form. Um, look, look at it. It, it. It's this big, tall, uh, just ridiculous-looking bunny creature. I don't know what's going on with its midsection there, but it, it's intriguing. I, I love how its like top outfit reminds me of like a Sailor Scout outfit or something. Um, and it's just really freaking cool looking, really freaking cool and cute. And I love the really long arms that grow huge at the end. Um, I love how the ears have like those pink tips and you still have those like little horns on the head. It's just really cool. I've always loved Antilamon good, uh, Antilamon's good form. It's just, I just really think it's cool. Number 14 is Rosemon Burst Mode. Um, another mode kind of thing that Digimon have. I, I've seen a few of when doing the research that I didn't know about before. Um, and Rosemont Burst Mode is another example of one that it's just really pretty, really hot, just great color design. Um, I, I didn't have a full body design to show off with this one. I just thought was, this was the best picture, but I love the whites and the pinks. Uh, even the little black accents really work for this one. Uh, number 13 is Lunamon. Lunamon is just a little cutie. Like, look at that. And it's like, when you, a lot of people think of Digimon, they think of these little creatures like this, but it's like Digimon have very unique and uh, differentiating designs. And yeah, Lunamon is one of the more ones you, is one of the ones you think more about when you think about, oh, what does a Digimon look like? But I, I think she's still really cute, really... I, I love the, like, string of hair coming off of her forehead. The, she feels like her design is very lunar, very moon-like. Um, even just the uh, ears, I guess you would call them, the four different ears. It's like it, the colors, 
with the like blues and whites and yellows, the even the like pinkish eyes feels very much very lunar. And I, I don't know how else to describe it. Um, the ribbon around its neck uh, going into that moon amulet, it's just like really cute, really cute and pretty. And I, I really love the design. I love how it's uh, how the bottom looks like it's a dress and everything. Really cute. Number 12 is Wizardmon. So we had Flame Wizardmon before. Now here's regular Wizardmon. Wizardmon, honestly, it's because of the anime for me. Um, the entire storyline with Wizardmon and Gatomon and Kari, um, like, people cry over Leomon, and it's like, I'm just kind of, like, I, I get it, but it's like, meh, never really hit me emotionally. Wizardmon hit me emotionally. That shit made me cry as a kid, and has made me cry as an adult. That shit is emotional. Um, Wizardmon is just, he's just a good boy. He is just a really good boy, and he deserves all the love for it. Uh, number 11 is Anjumon, just eking out of being in the top 10. Anjumon, it's just like, it's kind of the same thing with Devimon. Um, I've just always loved the entire angel versus devil aesthetic for a lot of the, a lot of the Digimon world. And Anjumon has always been kind of like the epitome of the angelic, holy Digimon uh, style. Um, like, he's an angel, but he's also a warrior. He, he's almost kind of more like an archangel, specifically. He has the uh, silver helmet and everything. He has the staff. He has, like, all the, like, ribbons and stuff, the four wings. I love that it's four wings, by the way. It's, it's, it's just, uh, technically six, because there's two little wings down there, too. Um, still, though, that's really cool and everything. Um, I love the little, like, silver balls around the body, those little, like, silver spheres planted around there. It's, like, it, it's a really interesting design that might not be needed, but it, it adds a new, like, layer to him. Almost makes him feel more like a warrior in some way. The sun on the one so shoulder is really cool as well. In fact, that entire side of the body seems to have more yellow than the other side. <laughs> um, more gold, I guess. It's just like, yeah, I just always really loved that design. Always loved the, and plus, obviously, always loved Anjaman in terms of his role uh, in the series with TK and everything. Um, so, yeah. And now we get into the top 10, my 10 favorite Digimon. And number 10 is Marine Anjaman. Marine Anjaman, from what I've read, is even though. It's named Anjumon. It's not actually connected to the rest of, like, the Anjumon uh, family of Digimon in any way. Um, and it, it kind of makes sense looking at it. It's like, how is that an Anjumon, other than it's angel-looking? Um, Marine Anjumon is also a mega level, like, the highest level of Digimon. And it's uh, the highest normal level of Digimon. Because there's, you know, like there's in training, there's rookie, there's champion, ultimate, and mega. Um, Marine Anjuman, extremely strong, but the biggest reason for me is like one of the cutest Digimon by far. Like, look at that. Just super freaking cute. The pinks, the green eyes, the red heart on the chest, the, the wings and little like antennae. It's just... It's a really just freaking cute design, and it's just like, yeah, you think of, like, this as an angel, you think specifically of, like, a cherubim, um, or a cupid, or something like that. Uh, so it's like, oh, it's just super freaking cute, and I love it. <laughs> uh, number nine, Infermon, the villain of the R War Game arc of the Digimon specials, and, uh, the villain, one of the villains, in the uh, Digimon movie for America, which was just the specials put together. Infermon is the ultimate level of the evolution line for the virus Digimon in the movie slash specials, um, with the form above it being Diaboramon. Infermon is scary. And I think that's one of the reasons I like it. It's very spider-like, but also it, it, it kind of makes me think of tech in a way, like, it, it almost feels very tech-like. And it's also very 
it very much fits its virus like style and aesthetic and is also very demon like it's like it combines a lot of this different like already on its own creepy aesthetics and combines them all into just a really freaking creepy and scary digimon um and honestly i think inframon is scarier than diaboramon diaboramon is a little freaky but also is a little bit more manageable in that kind of sense <laughs> Infermon just looks unpredictable and chaotic and creepy and unnatural and just so unnerving, and I love it. Number eight is Salomon, another one based on cuteness. Salomon is the rookie level for Gatomon. Um, and it's kind of funny because Salomon is very much dog-like. Um, but you can also see how it would evolve into Gatomon. Um, and, and you, it has the ring and everything around its neck instead of around its tail and everything. And it's just, it's super cute. It's like just the cutest thing like you could think of just this cute cream colored, uh, little puppy dog with a blushy face, these giant ass blue eyes. And it's just like, yeah, just generally just, it's, it's designed to be super freaking cute. <laughs> um, and I, I kind of wish you saw Salomon more, but with Kari and Gatomon, it's like you're, she's almost always in Gatomon form, which is the champion level, which is very unusual con considering most of the other Digimon partners are almost always in their rookie form. Um, so yeah. Uh, but we move on to number seven, Cressamon. Cressamon is one I've gotten more uh, to know lately thanks to the Cyber Sleuth game. Uh, I've used the Cressamon line, and Cressamon is just another one that's just really pretty. Like, some people I could see saying there's, like, a lot going on here, and yeah, there kind of is, but I think it all works. Um, like, the really pretty design with the, uh, like, kind of blue out like top looking thing going on there, the ribbons and, like, kind of, uh, what would you call those coming off of the arms and back and all, like, feelers? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but then how the arm, like, the arms, like, go into these weapons and stuff, these, like, crescent-bladed weapons. Um, the feet being armored as well, but then, like, you see still, like, the pink legs with the lunar uh, symbol still from its pre-evolutions and everything. And it's like, it's like a warrior, but, like, this really pretty warrior, this really majestic and graceful warrior uh, who has, like, these horrifyingly dangerous-looking weapons, but you would imagine wielding them in a very majestic kind of way, with very majestic motions. So yeah, I just really love Cressamon because of that. And again, just using her in Cyber Sleuth, she's really good. <laughs> Number six is Lekismon, the pre-digivolution for Cressamon. Uh, so you can kind of see where it, um, Lunamon from before had started to digivolve into where it reached Cressamon. Um, got, like, taller and more humanoid in figure and form, um, bipedal and everything. Um, you see the streamers and the feelers starting to come out. You see the armor starting to come out. Um, still has that really cute design, though, that Lunamon had, but also starts to get more badass and elegant, like Cressamon. And it's kind of the perfect combination of the two, which is why I actually like it a little more than Cressamon. Because it combines that cuteness with the elegance and prettiness in a way that feels like a natural middle stage between those two. And honestly, I just really think that she's just really awesome in battle as well, just like with Cressamon. So, yeah. Uh, but now we get into top five out of over a thousand Digimon total, my top five favorites. Number five is Sistermon CL. So there's a few different Sistermon uh, Digimon, um, and they even have these awakened forms. But Sistermon CL, uh, regular form, not awakened, is definitely my favorite. And it remind she reminds me so heavily of Black Lagoon, it's not funny. Like, seriously, that is the only thing I thought of when I saw her design. Like, oh, this is a Black Lagoon character. And it's like, but, I, but she's also prettier than a Black Lagoon character generally is. 
she's like a she's an overly pretty black lagoon character and i love it and i i love the the mouse hat she wears um i i love that she's like a nun using guns and everything i've always thought that kind of uh that kind of general ideal was funny but also really cool um just the idea of like a a holy person using like heavy weaponry um which is why i always liked like nicholas d wolfwood from trigun he was always my favorite trigun character because he's like this priest who carries around a giant cross which is just a, a gun with a shit ton of smaller guns inside of it and it's like all right <laughs> But yeah, I, I love her design. She's really cute, really pretty. I love the eyes, the targets in the eyes, uh, like the crosshairs. Oh, I love that. That's really cool. I love the blues and the whites, how they mesh together. Um, it's just a really cute design, really pretty design. Uh, number four is Renamon. So I mentioned Renamon before when we were talking about Kyubimon. Renamon is my favorite of that line for obvious reasons. Let's be honest, the anime. Renamon in the anime was fantastic. She was easily one of the best Digimon partners in all of the anime. Um, I, I loved her uh, relationship with Rika. I loved how she was very, very sassy. And I just really love her design. She has that elegant fox design that Kyubimon has, except it's less mythical, obviously, because a lower form. And feels more like this really cool, like, warrior. Like this, like, almost like a female warrior tribe kind of thing. Like the Kiyoshi warriors from Avatar or something. Uh, I love the yin-yang symbols on her sleeves and everything. I, I love the purple uh, yin-yang style symbols on her legs. It's just like the fur placement, the little like spikes on the back of her arms and uh, on her shoulders or whatever, the tail and everything, the colorations, it's all just really cool. And again, her character in the anime, it's just like, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, now top three, top three, and number three is Gatomon because, because Gatomon. Um, Gatomon is just the best Digimon partner easily like she has character she has like ability she has an amazingly cute design like the general like cat design is cute as it is but with like the purple tufts of fur on the end of the tail and the ears the um glove the clawed glove like uh things on her paws um the ring around her tail and everything it's just it all really fits without feeling like it's too much the only thing I would say about her that, that I feel like makes no sense is that she her design feels so much like a, a rookie level rather than a champion level. But I think that also adds a layer of badassness to her. She's this cute little kitty, but she's also a really badass fighter as well. And she's extremely loyal, especially to her human partner. And I just really love her design. And I've always loved her character and she's always been up there for me. But there are two that I like a little bit more. And these top three are extremely close, by the way. Uh, number two, the runner up for my favorite Digimon is Terriermon. Another one that's just super cute. And honestly, as much as I hate to say it, just a little bit cuter than Gatomon. The big freaking ears do it for me. Like the big floppy ass ears that Terriermon can use to fly, the those giant uh, cutesy eyes and everything, um, the color scheme. It's just like Terriermon is just the cutest fucking Digimon there is. Period. Like he's just he's just the bestest boy. He is just cute, cute as hell. There's no, plus, I mean, obviously his character in the series is great as well. Um, and there's been a couple of Terriermon that I know of in the series, uh, as far as I got. Um, because there was one that was in the Digimon movie, as well as Lotmon. They were brothers. But there was also a Terriermon in, uh, Generation 3, I think it was? Yeah, I think it was 3, because I think it was the same generation as Renamon and Guillemon. Um, and that one was, uh really cool too and i i just always loved 
Terrier Mon's cutesy, innocent, uh, lovable personality. And honestly, if you're to get a plush of any Digimon, it's got to be fucking Terrier Mon. And, and, and if the plush does not have big enough ears, it's, it's not worth your time. <laughs> you got to have the big floppy ears. But there is one Digimon I love more than Terrier Mon. Um, and honestly, it's one of the most beloved and most popular Digimon out there for a number of reasons. One, because powerful. Two, the design is just really great. And three, because out of every Digimon, out of all over 1,000 Digimon. She's one of the most popular because of how honestly, just completely honestly, how sexy she is. Like, seriously, she is looted to hell and back. Um, there is definitely more sexual art of this Digimon than any other, and that is obviously Angel Woman. Angel Woman is... My favorite Digimon, and not because she's just because she's sexy and everything. Um, she is, but Angel Woman is the ultimate level evolution for Gatomon, and she's perfection to me. Her design is gorgeous. Like I, I love the colors. I love the specific elements that were added to it to make her feel, I guess, more feminine than regular Angelmon. Um, I love her personality, her aesthetic, everything. Her abilities in the anime, of course. I'm, I'm referring to, like, personality and everything. Um, and honestly, when I think about Digimon, she's the first Digimon that comes to mind every time. Because it, she's just the one that, even growing up as a kid, left that much of an impact on me. And... Yeah, being honest, part of the reason was because I wanted to be Angelmon. Growing up, e even assigned male at birth, I wanted to be Angelmon. I wanted to have that long, pretty blonde hair. I, that's why I, one of the biggest reasons why I've always wanted blonde hair. And why I eventually did dye my hair blonde. Well, get it dyed blonde by my godmother, but still. <laughs> Um, and she just always had this impact on me and always made me feel like this is who I want to be. And it's like, even, even without necessarily realizing it, because as a kid, it's like, I didn't fully realize it. It's like, and, and this happened with multiple instances, multiple different shows and characters like that did that as well. But she was definitely the big one and, and realizing it after having come out, it's like, oh yeah, no, this is very much, this was very much an inspiration for me. Um, she was just always like, to put it in modern terms, she was always goals for me. And it's just like, I just wanted to be as pretty as her, as nice and generous and likable as her. I, I always strive to be just that good of a person really because of in in a lot of different things because of a lot of different uh, characters and whatnot but especially because of her and again her aesthetic to me is perfection there's like no flaws in it at all she's extremely strong being an ultimate level digimon with just a lot of power in general and of course she's one of the holy Angel Digimon, which, as I've stated a couple times before in this uh, list, I do have a bit of a bias towards. Everything is working together for Angel Woman to make her my absolute favorite. Her aesthetic, her angel uh, concept, her beauty... Her just being the evolved form of Gatomon. And the connection, of course, she has with Kairi and uh, everything with that. That also went into Gatomon in the anime and stuff. And it's just like everything. I just recently, just today, while playing um, 
my game while playing Cyber Sleuth. I got her on the game, and it's like I was so hyped for that. I, like I might be able to show it. I, I have a screen shot in my album on here, uh, which will actually, if, if it shows up well enough, we'll, you'll be able to see her like body, um, her full body. Let's see if I can show this. Probably not. It's like you, know, you can kind of see it when it's angled, but it's like the lighting and everything kind of hurts it, and it's blurry because it's so close up. But yeah, this is like a screenshot from uh, from the game I, I, I took today. And it's like, she's just so pretty. And it's just like, I, I just love her so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that is my top 30 favorite Digimon. And that's not to say that other Digimon that aren't in this list I don't like. There's plenty of Digimon I like. In fact, I'd say I like a good portion of them. Um, just because they're not in this list doesn't mean I don't like them. Uh, you, you didn't see, like, Gargomon or Rapidmon in this list. You didn't see Giamon. You didn't see Patamon. There's so many in this list. Um, it's, it's 30. There's, these are 30 out of over a 1,000. So it's like, yeah, there's going to be some missing. <laughs> but it's over, all in all, overall, these are my 30 personal favorites based on how they're portrayed in the anime, the games, their designs, their powers, that kind of jazz. Um, and yeah, it's just like with my recent like love of Digimon just really kicking into full gear again because of Cyber Sleuth and because of the new anime reboot and everything, I've just really gotten into these Digimon like never before, especially some of my classic favorites. And I can't wait for the 2020 anime to bring in Kari, to bring in Gatomon and Angelomon, and it's like, it's gonna be just so damn good. It's like, you know I'm going to, like, fangirl the fuck out when that happens. Um, but yeah. Tell me in the comments below, what are some of your favorite Digimon? Uh, what are some of the ones that left an impact on you when you watched the series growing up, if you did? And if you didn't, uh, if, you're got, if you've gotten into it more recently, what are some of the ones that you've definitely connected to and really started to like after getting into it? Just tell me some of your favorites and whatnot down in the comments below, and thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.